Today, we are going to be looking at finite state morphology, specifically flag diacritics and the unification flag. This content can be found in the finite state morphology textbook in chapter 7. We will be using the FOMA finite state toolkit. Let's consider modeling the following language. In this small language, we want words to be able to begin with A or I, followed by one or more Bs, and ending with either A or I. Here is the small machine corresponding to this language. As you can see, it does exactly what we said. Let's take a look at some of the strings that it accepts. Here we have A, B, A, A, B, I, A, B, B, A, A, B, B, I, and so on. However, what if we wanted to change this language so that words that begin in A must also end in A, and words that begin in I must also end in I. Let's try making this change. Here is a corresponding machine. We see that words that begin in A must end in A, and words that begin in I must end in I. If we look at the words in this language, we see that this is indeed the case. If we run up, we can confirm this, and if we try a word that should not occur in the language, we get verification that it does not. However, there's one issue. We had some duplication. Specifically, we duplicated the middle portion of this language, B+. In this small example, that's not too bad. B plus is a simple regular expression, and it's not burdensome to include it twice. However, imagine modeling a much more complicated language where the portion that we have here, B plus, is instead something much more complicated. In that case, it would be problematic and at the least hard to read and hard to maintain to include that duplicated section. We're going to look at a way of solving this problem without duplication using flag diacritics. Let's begin by defining the language in terms of a start, a middle, and an end. So we've defined the start as either A or I, the middle as one or more Bs, and the end as A or I. Finally, we're going to define a regular expression 
where we have start, middle, end. This machine is equivalent to the one that we defined early on. The problem is this machine allows A and I to intermix. So what can we do to change this? Let's define a new machine, this time using the flag diacritic for unification. Here when we define start, we're going to include an additional multi-character symbol alongside A. Because we're working in FOMA, when we declare a multi-character symbol, we're going to put that inside quotation marks. Here, we are just saying that start begins with the symbol A and followed and is followed by the multi-character symbol at u.foo.a at. Multi-character symbols in FOMA use this reserved syntax. The multi-character symbol must begin and end with an at sign. Immediately following the first at sign is one of a few reserved letters. U stands for unification. We'll look at the other flags in another video. After the letter we have a dot followed by a name. The name is something that we get to make up. It can be anything. Here, we're giving this flag the name foo, followed by a dot, followed by a specific value associated with the variable foo. Let's look at the machine that goes along with start. This is a regular machine, just like any other. It has states 0, 1, and 2. State 2 is a final state. And this machine has A on the first arc and this special multi-character symbol on the second arc. Let's look at the language. This may be unexpected to you. After all, this machine appears to have two arcs. So why isn't this special multi-character symbol showing up when we display the words associated with this language? The answer is that the FOMA runtime strips out instances of reserved flag diacritic symbols. The flag diacritics are special symbols that are interpreted by the FOMA runtime. Let's look at what this particular symbol can get us. We're going to pop this machine off and then redefine it so that the machine can start with either A or with I. Like we did with A, we're going to include a flag diacritic multi-character symbol. It's again going to be a unification symbol, and it again is going to be named foo. But this time, the value of foo will be i 
instead of A. Keep in mind, this name, Foo, is completely arbitrary and can be chosen by the user, as is the name of the value that this can take on. Here I'm using the, the names A and I because they're helpful to me, but you can choose any names that you want. Let's push this machine and take a look. Here we have a machine that can either have I or A, and for each of those letters, the unification flag diacritic sets the value foo to I or sets the value foo to A. Now, what's really going on here is unification. At the beginning of the transition through the machine, the foo variable is not set. When we traverse the machine following the I path, we get to this arc, and at this point, the foo value is unset. Because it is unset, unifying its value to I is allowed. We reach the end of the machine. Alternatively, if we follow the A path through the machine, at the beginning, the foo variable is unset. We reach this arc, find that it is unset, and the unification operation succeeds, setting the value of foo to A. This will make a little more sense in a few minutes when we define end. Let's define middle as B+. Plus. Again, in many machines this would be more complicated, and that's one of the motivations why we, why would we, why we would be using flag diacritics. And finally, we're going to define end. Now, earlier we had end look like this, where end could be either A or I. This time, we're going to use flag diacritics to prevent A and I from intermixing. With A, I'm going to put this same unification flag diacritic, unifying the value foo to value A. Or alternatively, for I, unifying the value foo to I. Next, let's define the regular expression start, middle, end. Let's take a look at the, the machine. As before, we can begin with either A or I, and in either case, we're going to unify the foo value to a set value, either A or I. At this point, we now produce a B, possibly more Bs, and at this point, can traverse through the machine. Let's say we've started with A, so we traverse along this path, set foo to A, reach state 4. Now at this point, if we traverse to state 6, unification will encounter this flag diacritic variable, and we will attempt to unify the value foo with what's currently there and A. The, val the existing value A can successfully unify with itself, A, and so we're allowed to proceed, and then can continue to the end. But alternatively, if we had begun with A, set foo to A, continued to state 4, and attempted to traverse the arc from state 4 to state 5, the unification operation would fail. The current value of foo is A. The symbol here 
indicates that we should attempt to unify the value foo with the, the variable foo with a value i. a and i are not the same, and therefore the unification fails, and we are the FOMA runtime forbids us from transiting this path. The same would occur if we began with i, set foo to i, and then attempted to transit from state 4 to state 6. If we look at the words associated with this machine, we can see that this behavior does indeed occur. We get ABBA, ABA, IBI, IBBI, and so on. And if we try a new word, we see that it works if we have A's and B's, A's and A's, or I's and I's, but not if we have a mix. This shows us what we can do with the unification flag diacritic. Keep in mind that this is this flag diacritic is a special multi-character symbol that is interpreted specifically in a certain way by the FOMA runtime. In other videos, we'll look at other flag diacritics and look at using this particular flag diacritic and others in Lexi files.